And now it's action time. A traffic light circuit is an example of a simple Mili FSM. I think that you are all familiar with this device and you see it every day when crossing the street. A semaphore is either off or it has one of the three colors, red, yellow and green. Let's analyze the table and discover the state transitions. If the enable signal is zero, then our semaphore is off. If we are in the off state and enable is set, then we go into the red state. After we enter the red state, we open the red light and loop here for 50 clocks. When the timer reaches the value 50, we go into the yellow state. Here we loop for 10 clocks and next go to the green state. After entering the green state, we wait for the timer to reach the value 30, then go into the red again. The cycle repeats until the semaphore is disabled. If enable is cleared, regardless of the current state, we go into off. You may wonder, why is this a special semaphore? A faculty student of mine pointed out that the color sequence is actually red, green, yellow, not red, yellow, green. Depending on the country you are, the moment when yellow comes may slightly vary. Since the behavior is documented, our semaphore doesn't have a bug, but it has a feature. This is the industry standard of saying something works slightly different than it should. Let's implement the special semaphore described earlier. For this project, you are going to need the following Verilog files semaphorefsm.v and tbsemaphorefsm.v. At line 3, we declare the module's IO ports. Red, yellow, and green have the output reg type because they will be used in the left hand side of an always at procedure. At line 13, we declare the parameters used for the four states. We use one hot encoding as this is a very popular technique for encoding state machine values. This will make the circuit synthesizable at a higher clock frequency and will use one bit comparators in the combinational logic. The disadvantage is that it requires more flip flops and there are more invalid states but we are going to use the default statement for compensating this. At lines 18 and 19, we declare the state and the next state variables. Remember that state is used for the sequential logic and next state is used for the combinational logic. At line 22, we declare a 6-bit timer and the timer clear signal that will be used to clear the timer when changing the states. This is necessary because we sit in each state a different number of clock cycles. In this piece of code, we have all the magic behind the semaphore. We use an always at star because this is the industry's best practice for combinational logic. Remember that the behavior of all the internal variables happens in the order of the line index. It is similar with executing a block of procedural code in C or in Python. At line 27, we have the default values for all the variables involved in the state machine logic. At line 32, we have a case of state that decides the transitions. Always use case of state, not of case of next state, because this could lead to errors. In this block, next state has to be only in the left hand side. At line 33, we say what happens when we are in the off state. If enable is set, then next state will be red. Otherwise, this line of code won't execute and the next state will preserve its value from line 27. Let's assume that enable was set and in the next clock cycle we enter the red state. When we are in this state, red equals 1, the other signals preserve their default values from line 27. The if statement decides how much we are going to loop in this state and when we are going to transition. If the timer reaches the value 50, we go to the yellow, otherwise we stay here. I wrote the code like this to avoid using smaller and equal operator because this kind of comparator will synthesize in a larger circuit than the equality operator. This is called an area optimization. Remember that you can have the same RTL behavior, but the synthesis results to be very different. After the timer reaches the value 50, we go to yellow and set timer clear to make the counter zero again. Timer clear is also an area optimization as we use only one bit to clear the timer from any state. After we reach the yellow state, we use the same logic but with different transitions. We stay here for 10 clocks and then we go to green. After we reach green, we wait here 30 clocks and then go to red again. Lines 38, 47 and 56 also contain an RTL optimization for synthesis. I compare the timer value with 6-bit decimal values, thus using a 6-bit equality comparator. If I wouldn't mention the number of bits, 
Some tools can interpret this as a 32-bit comparison between integers, thus using a comparator five times bigger. At line 63, we have the default value for the next state, which is off. This prevents synthesis latches and for the state machine to remain stuck in an invalid state. Since state has four bits and we only use four values, it means that we have 12 out of 16 invalid states. Line 67 is used to exit from each state if enable was cleared. In the state machine diagram is represented by the three arrows that come back from every state to off. At line 76 we have the state sequencer that uses the flip-flops with posage clock and async reset n. If reset n equals 0 then it will go to off, otherwise it will copy the value from next state. Remember that this is the memory of the state machine, while next state is the logic part. At line 84 we copy the value of state to the output port using a continuous assignment. At line 87 we have the timer that helps us cycle for multiple clocks in the same state. At line 88 we describe the reset n behavior and at line 90 what the timer should do when the clear condition is set or when the enable signal gets cleared. This condition has a higher priority than incrementing the timer. If enable wasn't present here, then the timer would have preserved its current value when the state was going to off. So the first red state would have lasted less than 50 clocks because the timer had a non-zero value when entering it. Line 92 states that the timer should increment only if we are in any state different than off. At line 93 we use a 1b1 instead of 1 because some synthesis tools could also treat this as integer addition which is 32 bits wide. By writing the code in this manner we will infer only a 6-bit adder. This is also an RTL technique for area optimizations. What do you think about the semaphore state machine RTL code? Do you find it easy or hard to understand? The test bench is very easy and has the same structure as the previous test benches. We first declare the test bench variables, next we instantiate the DUT and connect them together. At line 111 we declare a list of parameters that have the same names as the internal states of the module. At line 127 we declare a 0.5 MHz clock. At line 133 we have the procedure that controls the simulation flow. We monitor the enable and the outputs of the colors. At line 137 we reset the DUT and clear the enable. At line 140 we enable the module. The code from line 143 is used to let the semaphore cycle two times. The repeat keyword is similar with the for loop and can execute multiple times a block of code. At line 144, we wait for the state to have the value green. This wait keyword is a blocking keyword and the test bench will wait until the condition is met. At line 145, we wait for the state to change its current value which is green. It can be translated to wait for a change on state out. This can be used to synchronize the test bench with any output of the DUT. At line 148, we want to disable the semaphore while the state is yellow. At line 152, we enable the semaphore again and stop the simulation 40 microseconds later. After you run the simulation, you should get these results. The first yellow arrow shows how red is set one clock after enable and it lasts until the second yellow arrow. Next, the state changes and yellow is set. This behavior repeats periodically until enable gets the value zero. If you look at the wave, you can see how the timer works relentlessly and how timer clear is set when the states transition. The state machine diagram is generated by Quartus as it recognizes the state machine coding style. Here is a challenge for you. Update the semaphore FSM to be able to generate an UK traffic light sequence. The inputs and outputs should remain the same, but you should modify the next state code to satisfy the requirement. I recommend adding a new state where you set both red and yellow for 10 clock cycles. I'm sure that this is easy for you at this point in the course. Good luck!